Greetings folks, uh, another exciting day in this video. I'm going to be having a look at the GM3 3-axis gimbal from Caddx paired up with the Avatar HD Pro kit on my Atom RC Swordfish. I'm going to be using it as a pure head tracking setup. Uh, the Goggles L come with head tracking built in uh, and with the 3-axis gimbal we have the full HD head tracking. So without further ado let's get up in the air. I'll show you all the unboxing and setup at the end of the video but uh, fun bit first let's go flying. Okay we're ready to go first off I'll launch I'll put the goggles up on my head so the camera will probably look up in the air. Get up in the air. Put into cruise mode and I'll put the goggles on. And here we go. First thing I want to do is center it. There we go. Three pushes of the back button. And there we go. Look at that. All the way around, and look how far I can look around at the back. <laughs> look at the back of the plane, oh, it's amazing! Good lord, this is incredible. Oh, I feel so natural actually. I, I was a bit concerned about how odd it would feel, but um, oh, it's pretty cool. I can tilt my head too, like that. Look at that. That is amazing. Let's cruise around. I know you want me to go and have a look at that island, don't you? Maybe later on. So you can choose which axis the uh, head tracker follows. Uh, seems to be following everything at the moment does it yeah so it's following everything at the moment and also like following the axis of the plane as it flies as well as uh, me being able to look around at the same time and you can you can choose whether it follows the uh, the pan or the uh, your I think I'll show you those things later on in the um, in the setup and the menu anyway Oh man, this is incredible. And I can recenter. Say if I want my head to be in that position, push the button three times, and there we go. So we've sort of got stabilised and head tracking at the same time. <laughs> I would like a way to turn the head tracking off so it's totally following. I'm turning my body, there we go, that's better. Uh, but I don't think you can do that, it's either sort of all or nothing, it seems, unless there is a way that I don't know yet. But look at that, that is just so natural, me turning around and having a look at the back. Motors, wing, it's cruising along in cruise mode. Let's cruise around again, what's your altitude, 30 metres, that's fine. Yeah, it does take some getting used to. And it's a good idea to have the plane in a cruise mode to start off with. Okay, let's off, head off down this way. cool is that? So the goggles L and the Avatar HD have to be on the same, uh, the latest firmware and the gimbal itself has to be on uh, recent firmware, uh, latest firmware possibly for the gimbal. Luckily mine was already in that firmware uh, because it's a PC only EXE file set up for the gimbal or to um, 
uh, to upload the firmware and I've only got Mac so it wouldn't have been much use for me but it all worked as it was just had to update the uh, avatar firmware for HD VTX and camera firmware and then it all worked so this is just a, a new level of FPV experience just incredible we look down at what we're flying over there over the other side over at uh, Depp's Beach the Pledge Beach coming back towards along the Hyson Trail one of the best walking tracks I have ever been on and this is our uh, afternoon walk usually so <laughs> this is very cool indeed Looking back towards West Island over there, King's Head. Ah, oh, this is magic. I can't believe this. Getting a bit of break up there at distance. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Don't know what my power. I had probably have low power on my video transmitter. I didn't even think to set that up actually. If I turn away, the uh, antennas are turning away. So yeah, fair enough. I have to address that. little boat can see us. Hello. It might be drifting a little bit. I have to recenter it every now and then. That's better. We have landed. All right, I've turned pan follow on. It seems to be doing the opposite to what I'm expecting it to do. All right, so let's go again. Oh, that's better. That's more what I wanted. It's less stabilised. Yeah. That's more like it. Uh, and the settings, I've got pan follow. And I turned the sensitivity right up to 15. So, anyway, it seems to be working the opposite way to what I was expecting but uh, that's the way I like it let's see we'll put it into acro mode and yeah that's better now I can fly the plane a bit better But uh, cruise mode is best. <laughs> then you can forget about altitude and just push it around the sky. 
Yeah, I like this. This is better. Excellent. So with this mode I've turned all the follow, follow off and I've turned the uh, follow sensitivity up to 15 which seems to have reduced the amount of follow. Oh no, I suppose it uh, increases the follow, doesn't it? So there's more doing... Oh yeah, well, okay. Zero sensitivity means that it's, it's more stabilised. 15, which is the full amount, means it's less stabilised, which is much better in my book. I like it less stabilised. I like to be able to see what the plane's doing. Bobbling around. Yeah, good stuff. I'm liking this. So that's a pretty amazing experience. Uh, it really does take a bit of getting used to. Um, and I'm not sure whether I like the uh, sort of stabilized while you're doing head tracking. There's a bit more to learn, for me at least. Uh, I may have, been, the camera may have been drifting a little bit as well, possibly due to vibrations, but a stunning experience being able to look all around, uh, up, down, right round to the tail while you're flying. Uh, is, is pretty amazing and I'm, I'm sure uh, it would feel more comfortable the more you got used to it the more I understand about setting it up to fly or to operate the way I want it to. It is the future of FPV I think. Ooh, just incredible. Uh, so anyway let's go back and unbox and uh, show you the setup. So let's have a look at what comes in the packet. This is the GM series. I have the GM3 3-axis gimbal setup guide there and a QR code to the manual. Connection diagram, we'll have a closer look at them a bit later on. And there's the little gimbal. And we get two connection cables uh, go in the same slot. This is just power, ground and RX and TX. And this one includes those as well as the four PWM control cables. There's the MIPI cable that goes to the video transmitter just taped on the bottom there. And the connection port there. And now looking at the HD Pro quick start guide, there's the VTX, the Pro camera, the dual antennas, little USB connection there, power and UART connection and nuts and bolts. Here's the little USB port here, which we connect USB to do firmware updates and to offload the recorded video and serves as the connection for the gimbal as well. UART connection on top, voltage ground, receive and transmit via the connector or the soldering pads if you want to do, do it that way. This is the top of the video transmitter by the way. The linking button and channel changing button as well. This is the pro camera and you have to undo these four screws and take the back off, remove the cable and attach the uh, gimbal cable. These are the threaded mounting holes in the bottom here, which I like a lot. You can just bolt onto a mount coming up from the bottom. M2 bolts. Over on the Caddx website, these are the different combinations you can get. The uh, 1, 2 or 3 axis gimbal with no camera, with camera or with the full kit. This is the one I have, the GM3 with Pro Kit. Showing the range of movement for all the different cameras now. So for pan, we have plus or minus 160 degrees. Basically, you can spin around and have a look at the tail of the plane. 120 up and down for tilt and 60 either side for roll. Now I have a quick look at the manual. This shows how to install the camera into the gimbal. A little bit tricky getting the MIPI cable off. You have to be careful with that not to damage it at all. And the connection options, uh, the GM3, this is this one here. If you're just using the head tracker, you only need to use this cable here with the, uh, the voltage ground and the R and T pins. Connect that to the USB port of the avatar. VTX, but if you want PWM controls, uh, then you can connect the four PWM cables to your flight control board and assign them to channels in your radio. PWM1 is for selecting the three different modes uh, of operation of the gimbal. Basically, you're choosing which axis stays level and which axis follows the plane. PWM2 channel is for adjusting the sensitivity of the follow action. And PWM3 and 4 are for manual control, or like pan and tilt of the gimbal using radio controls or uh, a third party head tracking unit. But the built-in head tracking, uh, you turn it on in the goggles L here. 
and the menu options you select off PWM or PTZ. PTZ is the one we want. You can reset the center angle and again you have three different choices of uh, follow or head tracking action. And you can adjust the sensitivity of the, of the follow, you can calibrate and return. Now luckily I didn't have to upgrade the firmware of the gimbal. Uh, mine seemed to be on the latest firmware or the appropriate firmware anyway. This is the gimbal config.exe program you have to use. It's not going to work on my Mac of course. You need a Windows PC to connect it up and update the firmware. So here's the gimbal and the video transmitter mounted on a 3D printed uh, mount that I made up. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that. The gimbal is mounted up on these uh, rubber blocks so it's very nicely damped on these four sort of rubber rubber supports. This is the three axis gimbal so we've got roll, pan and tilt. Uh, so that's the power, ground and RX and TX from the video transmitter. Uh, that'll go back to my flight control board. And you have separate power for the, the gimbal. And uh, this is the head tracker connection going into the USB port on the video transmitter. When I first started off, I had the camera upside down, so uh, nothing was going to work. <laughs> Even though I flipped it upside down in the, the goggles, the gimbal didn't understand. So I had to take the camera off, flip it around, and then everything, once you're centered it again, everything works properly. I had to upgrade the VTX to the latest firmware so that it would bind to the goggles. I've plugged the gimbal and the video transmitter into 9 volts on this uh, Matic F405 wing. Let's power it up. So head tracker is turned on and you can see it is now following the, the goggles nicely. And if you want to recenter it, say that's where your head is going to be, uh, you just push the button three times and the gimbal recenters. So then now that's our center position. It's more likely to be like that. So there we go. As long as you get the firmwares to match uh, and connect it up correctly, we're all good. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.